Hey everybody, today we're going to use a feature we've had for a lot of years in Photoshop called calculations. And to use calculations, you're going to have to have a calculator. Nah, I'm just kidding. We're going to actually convert an image that looks like this to a really creative black and white image that looks like this. Okay, are we ready for this? Let's get into calculations. Let's do it. everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to thinking creatively out of the box as a photographer and as a photo artist. Now, one of the things we're gonna look at is something called calculations that we've had for years. And uh, I have done this with a lot of special projects. And I really like this technique, but just as a heads up, we're gonna convert a, uh, a color photo into a black and white. And obviously it's not the only way we can do that. We have seen other ways of doing it. There's actually a black and white adjustment uh, layer, uh, you know, concept that we can do and there's other methods, but uh, it's really important to be exposed to different methods of converting to black and white. And you could choose the method that you like the best because one thing that I always emphasize, and sometimes people ask, well, which is the best method? And the best method is your method. The point is you should be exposed to different methods so you can determine which one do you like the best and start to use it. So calculations is something, again, we've had for years. So let's dive right into Photoshop. Let's take a look at this. All right, I'm going to go to the open dialog box. And what's really cool about this technique, it really doesn't matter what uh, type of photographer you are. In other words, if you're a landscape photographer, this works great. Portrait photography, um, go for it. I mean, it doesn't It doesn't matter. It's just a method of turning and converting, I should say, a color to black and white. Now, before I get into that, if you're fairly new, uh, if you could do me a favor, and that is uh, like the video that helps me out with the algorithm on YouTube to push it out to other people who have a, a similar interest. So again, like the video, please subscribe if you have not subscribed and hit that notification bell. All right, so with the image open, again, it could be any kind of a color image. If you go to the edit Drop, I'm sorry, the uh, image drop down menu and come down about oh, maybe two thirds of the way down, you'll see a feature called calculations. And when this dialog box opens up, I want you to look at blending options. Uh, it may be different in yours. Make sure it's set to multiply because there are different blending modes. I would set it to multiply. I'll leave everything else alone, 100% opacity. That, that kind of stuff you can change as you start to learn this technique. But notice there's channels here. There's a red and red. If I change the red in the drop down menu to green, you can see a subtle change in the image. If I go to the blue channel, you can see a change. Now, between the top area here and this area, you could just, who knows how many different combinations of things we can do here, but um, let's just pretend I like that. Okay. And again, this is all based on your image. The colors that are used will determine, you know, what you're going to like between these two. Even if I wanted to go with say red on red, which, um, yeah, what the heck I, I'll do that. Now, before I click on, okay, I want to choose this in the drop down menu, not a new channel. I want this to go to a new document. So now when I go over here to click on, okay, you can see it creates a new tab. So this is a new document. And notice that my original one here says RGB. This is my color. And over here, this is what's considered an alpha channel. And I can't remember when Adobe changed this. So I'm just going to show you a little gotcha, and I'll have to show you the workaround. But what I want to do is take this and move, it, move a copy of it to the colored one so it's another layer on top, so I can do a before and after comparison. And uh, here's what will happen if I do this. If I grab my Move tool, so again, V like in Victor to grab the Move tool, or go to your toolbar right here to grab the Move tool. I'm going to hold the Shift key down, <clears throat> and I don't let go of the Shift key till the very end. I click and drag with the mouse to the other tab, come down here, anywhere in the image, let go, with the mouse, my hand is still, or finger is still on the shift key, and then I let go. The problem is, ooh, it just killed the normal layer. 
and it brought that in. And I, I don't have the two two layers uh, stacked on top of each other. So that didn't work. So I'm going to undo that with Control Z. So what I have to do over here is I need to convert this to image, mode, and change it to grayscale. And now when I do that, I can now over here, again, I could click and drag and move it in and it'll, it'll be a separate layer. We'll see that in a minute. Because before I do that, I want to do this again. I want to go back to the color image. I want to go back to image drop down menu again over here in our menu. Come down to calculations. And now I'm going to change the drop down menu here to lighten. Screen is a little bit too, I mean, screen might be a good choice. I'm going to go with lighten. It's just not as severe. And again, that's all personal choice. And with that said, you could play again with the different channels. Maybe choose a green channel, see how that lightened up a little bit more. Uh, I'm not going to play with these different combinations. I think you got the idea. You play with that to get that look or feel that you want. And then again, click on OK. And then again, I want to go over to Image Dropdown Menu, Mode, and choose Grayscale. So now when I go here to the first one I just did, which was the Multiply one, with the move tool activated, so again, V like in Victor, or grab it on your toolbar here. I'm going to hold the shift key down and never let go to the very last thing. I'm going to click and drag to this tab. I'm going to go over the top of the image. I'm going to let go of the mouse, but not the shift key. And now I let go of shift key. And that put that dead center covering the color you know, uh, image. And notice now I've got that as a separate layer because I had to convert the mode to grayscale. Earlier days, you never had to do that. So when that changed, I don't know. And maybe on an update, we're going to go back the way it was before. So just be aware of that. And then I'm going to go grab the other one that I used, the um, screen or lighten blending mode. And I'm going to grab the mouse again and uh, hold uh, with the move tool. Hold the shift key down. I'm going to click and drag back to the main image. Over the top here, let go of the mouse. Now I let go of shift key. And we've got our other layer right here. So this is really important to have those layers stacked on top of each other. So there's the multiply one, and then this was the, the lighten one. Or screen. <laughs> I can't remember which I think it was lighten. Anyhow, uh, here's what I want to do now. Double click on the gray area. And when I do that, it opens up the, the uh, blend if option category that we have. And I'm going to hold the alt key down, option on a Mac. And I'm going to split this here, and I'm going to split on the far right, these little uh, nodes, I guess. And I'm going to slide this back and forth to just to get the look that I want. And again, this is you know all based on personal taste. Now, if I didn't do this, this is very subtle here, but let's take a look at this one. If I move this, you can see how it's like really grungy looking over there. There's not a smooth transition right here. So by splitting that, again, holding the Alt key down or Option on a Mac, click and drag, I can make a nice, subtle transition. And same thing over here. So again, this is something, oops, sorry about that. Get rid of that. Hit the wrong key there. I'm going to hold that Alt down again, Option on a Mac, and let's split that. And again, every image will be slightly different based on the colors, that are used, contrast in that original image. But you play with this to get the look that you want and then click on OK. After you accept that, you can now play with different things. And this is all up to you. <clears throat> I might add a mask to the very top. So I'm going to click on this to add a mask. And then I'm going to grab my paintbrush, so B for brush. And again, if you don't use a shortcut keystroke, your brush is right here on the toolbar. And mine is set to about 30%. I wouldn't do 100%. Drop that down to 50, 40, 30, whatever you like. And what I want to do is maybe draw attention to the center area of this black and white image. And right in here around that fireplace. So what I want to do is I'm going to paint in black at 30% over areas that I feel is maybe a little bit too light. So I'm going to tone that down a little bit by just painting over these different areas. And again, 
it's the look that you want to do so you can go as far or as little as you want but i'm sort of i'm controlling like this right here i think that your, your eyes are going to go there too much so i'm going to pull that down a little bit it's almost like dodging and burning but it's not we're just using this black and white technique and um again just keep doing it till you get the look that you want so let me paint a little bit more over here in certain areas and i'll just show you that if I hold the shift key down and click on my mask over here, so there's the mask. If I hold the shift key down, there's a before, after, before, and after. So it's just a way of controlling um, the lightness of that image versus you know the, the dark areas. And I can control and draw the viewer's eyes where I would like it to go. Okay, so this is using something called calculations in Photoshop. We've had this for many, many years, way back before even... Um, the this the uh the, the the cloud version you know of photoshop and stuff this goes way back i can't remember how many years but it's been a long time so hopefully you learned something and again let me just uh, make a quick announcement here um if you guys like what you're learning here at my channel uh consider uh supporting the channel and this on a volunteer basis uh, i don't ask for a membership type thing where you have to you know donate so much money every month every month but if you go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. You'll see the link right down here at the very bottom. Uh, you'll find an area that you can donate a coffee at any time that you want. It starts at $3. You want to buy me one coffee, two coffees, whatever. Really appreciate it. It will help me out with the channel and some of the expenses and actually operating this. Plus, it's a way of my encouragement You know that you're giving me that you guys are liking the channel and you want me to stick with it and, and keep putting out these videos. Okay, so with all this out of the way, uh, if you have a question, my email address should be right here at the very bottom. It is stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Feel free to privately email me with any issues or questions because I know a lot of people are afraid to put comments on the YouTube channel. I mean, that's tr strictly up to you. But uh, you'll get attention really fast or at a faster rate if you personally email me. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get that camera out. Let's experiment and let's try this technique on some new images and see what you can actually come up with. Until next time, see ya!